Good evening, hello, wherever you are around the world joining today. This is the Island Finance Forum 2024, and we're delighted to have you here to kick off this year's event. My name is James Ellsmore. I am the Chief Executive Officer of Island Innovation, um, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to join in this event. We started the Island Finance Forum uh, out of our flagship event, the Virtual Island Summit, which I'm sure many of you have attended, to specifically address the needs um, of financing that often come up. So what we found is that so often in the Virtual Island Summit, we're talking about these different projects and the key barrier was access to financing. And whether you're talking about island territories, regions, uh, municipalities, or small island developing states, SIDS countries, there are specific needs when it comes to financing for sustainable development that really impact the ability to action many of the projects um, around energy, around waste management, around tourism that are so necessary for sustainable, uh, sustainable development. So this event is designed to really bridge the gap between sustainable development practitioners and uh, the financial community um, to make sure that we, when we're thinking about all of the different aspects of sustainable development, we're also addressing the key aspects to bringing in finance and insurance um, and all of the other elements that affect um, these projects and affect the whole uh, island economy in many places when it comes to small island developing states uh, especially. Now, our philosophy is that, of course, every island is unique. Um, and when we're looking around the world, there are, of course, very important differences between regions and between islands in those regions. But there are common threads that connect all islands and the opportunity is really there to share information um, in order to show what has worked and what examples are working in other island regions that can be extrapolated to benefit all islands around the world. So our goal with this event and with all of our many other events is to try and make those connections and help islands collaborate. Um, and whether that's governments, local NGOs and civil society, the private sector or academia, bringing all those groups together to collaborate in order to drive sustainable development and prosperity for all in the island communities. So a little bit about island innovation. We are a consulting agency with a team of 18 based around the world, uh, working in different parts of the world. And our impact has, um, has that connection to many, many different regions. Um, we deliver projects for governments, for NGOs, for foundations, and many more, really specializing in island development strategies and creating local impact, using our unique expertise to help facilitate some of the amazing work that's already happening and bridge the gap with the connections that we're able to make through the wider island innovation community. So you'll hear about this during the week and during the other sessions um, of the Island Finance Forum. But in order to kick off the event, I'd like to now invite my colleague, Vincent Diringer, to launch our very first impact report um, for last year. And so Vincent, if you'd like to come onto the camera, um, we will share screen and talk a little bit more about our impact report. Yes, thank you, James. And uh, again, welcome to everyone for participating in, and thank you very much for participating in this 2024 Island Finance Forum. So everyone on Island Innovation is very proud to be launching our very first impact report, looking back on uh, what a wonderful year 2023 was in terms of impact. So um, as... Uh, Just going to quickly. Uh, this impact report wouldn't have been possible uh, without the uh, our clients and our partners who have worked with us throughout these years, and um, we're very grateful for their choice to work with us, and we look forward to continuing this journey together. Uh, this impact report also couldn't have been done without our fantastic team, which James highlighted um, earlier, 
uh, is a global community in itself. So uh, we are 18 people located all around the world, and this really helps us to work effectively across different time zones uh, with different clients and island communities around the world in different languages. So our commitment to driving positive change across our own communities is encapsulated uh, in our four pillar approach, ensuring comprehensive engagement with our key stakeholders and holistic assessment of cumulative impacts on citizens. So specifically our impact areas work on economic prosperity, political and governance transformation, social cohesion and inclusivity, as well as environmental sustainability. So altogether, um, those help us to support and work towards the United Nations development goals. Some of our highlights from 2023 uh, were thanks to our increasing media platform, uh, which as of 2023 and 2024, now comprises 200,000 community members, over 25 academic partners, uh, in 2023, we had over 50,000 newsletter readers. We published over 300 articles uh, and have over 40 partner institutions altogether. That is over 500 global islands represented. And Island Innovation was also uh, proudly uh, partnered in 2023 in, as part of the Clean Energy for EU Islands movement. And we have several information, uh, yeah, it's fun. Um, several um impactful client projects that we'd like to also share with you today so uh primarily our first one with the caribbean climate justice leaders academy sponsored by the open Science societies foundation we designed and created a program explaining the linkages between climate change and social and economic impacts within island communities within the caribbean um, this program drew in over 500 applicants from across the Caribbean from young people looking to participate and learn more um, about climate justice. So from those 500 applicants, we drew in 35 young people who represented every single CARICOM nation. And 10 of those then went on to represent their communities at COP28 in Dubai and have a significant impact in one, sharing their um, in the uh, plights of their communities and the solutions developed by their communities at COP and what it means to be uh, Caribbean youth uh, working within the climate justice um, sector. Uh, next, we had the sustainable sustainability uh, and research and innovation Congress in 2023. So SRI held their Congress in Panama last year and Island Innovation was tasked with uh, executing their communication strategy. So SRI um, had a both virtual and uh, physical um, event in place that drew over 2,000 participants, which made up researchers, business leaders, government and civil society experts from around the world trying to catalyze the next steps in sustainable transformations. So together we achieved over 265,000 impressions across various social media platforms, 55,000 email openings, uh, and we were able to help them uh, fill in 200, 2,000 participants and representing over 100 countries. Uh, our community programs, we continue to have a very successful ambassadors program. So um, this year we were able to bring in over 600 ambassadors from over 500 islands. Uh, and this was another successful year where we continue to grow and connect these islanders from around the world through our program and supporting, fostering their interest in sustainable development. Our community programs also contained our academic council, um, which saw us continue to create the digital bridges, this time between the different academic institutions that are working towards a sustainable future. And now for our networking uh, connections, James. Thank you so much, Vincent, for running through these. And we will make the link to the impact report for that full information um, available in the chat. And you'll also be able to find it on our website for more information um, and to be able to download the full impact report. Um, in, in terms of other connections we've made, so these are just a few examples of the connections made via our various events. We were very happy to see um, one of our ambassadors, uh, Alfredo Coro, the mayor of Del Carmen in the Siagao Islands, launching their own um, uh, 
remote work and digital nomad initiative to bring uh, visitors there. This is a fantastic initiative, um, which was uh, was was inspired by some of the learnings created by our own island innovation programs looking at how other islands such as madeira have launched their own programs to bring more long-term tourists we also were very happy to see uh, one of our delegation uh, delegates in the leadership academy in the caribbean that vincent mentioned uh, muskan kimani uh, being able to use the information there and the connections via the island innovation network to bring in her own uh, projects and connect to other islands around the Caribbean and specifically other parts of the Dutch Caribbean, Aruba and St. Martin, to be able to advance and accelerate their work there. And finally, our events. So our, obviously, Island Innovation is well known for our um, events. And last year was really a spectacular year for the events that we launched. So starting off this time last year with the Island Finance Forum, um, we were able to bring in thousands of people from around the world with um, over 80 speakers and 30 countries represented, leading into our in-person event in Madeira, the Blue Economy and Sustainable Islands Forum. Um, it was a fantastic uh, kickoff event, bringing people to the wonderful island of Madeira. And actually, uh, the delegation from Prince Edward Island um, attending with the Minister of the Environment inspired the uh, Global Sustainable Island Summit taking place later this year um, to, be, uh, to be launched. And so that spun out of that and more coming on that uh, soon. Um, Finally, we uh, also were in Curaçao in the Caribbean for the for Island Innovations event in partnership with Colectivo. Um, you can see here our full team taking part in that event. And it was a fantastic place, not only to experience everything that Curaçao has to offer, to host our own event with the local community and to run our leadership retreat for our senior leadership retreat team on the island to hear from some of the local um, local businesses, local stakeholders, and to put our heads together and plan how we're going to um, accelerate activities for island innovation this year. Of course, then we led into the Virtual Island Summit, our flagship event every September, which included a number of prime ministers, Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis and Grenada, in addition to the Secretary General of the Commonwealth and a number of other speakers, again, bringing together islands from the North Atlantic to the Caribbean to the Pacific. And for me, the one of the biggest highlights of the year was our activities at COP28. So not only were we able to support 10 young people from the Caribbean to travel to Dubai and to really give them a platform for their work on climate justice. We were able to hold our own um, five-day stage in partnership with Climate Action. The Island of Hope um, was a really fantastic uh, event that, br that, that, that brought together many of our stakeholders that have connected with Island Innovation virtually over the years to um, come together in person. The event was kicked off by the president of Palau. And we again had, had a number of ministers from really around the world taking part in addition to local practitioners using COP28 as an opportunity to bring islands from around the world together to talk about how we can really advance our agenda um, moving forward. And so um, for me, that was definitely one of the highlights of the year, taking our team there and, and all of the things that we were able to accomplish here. Um, and thanks again to Climate Action for uh, partnering with us to launch that, uh, that, that the fantastic Island of Hope. Finally, um, what's next? So you're here for the Island Finance Forum. You know about this, but what else is going to be coming up throughout the year? I think the big, uh, the really big exciting event that you should all be aware of coming up in just a few months, the 21st to the 23rd of May, is our Global Sustainable Island Summit in Prince Edward Island. And look out in your emails because every Island Finance Forum attendee has a 10% uh, discount voucher on tickets that are currently available. So we would really encourage you to check out your emails, take advantage of that discount code, and it will be fantastic to see those of you that can make it to um, the Canadian province of Prince Edward Island, a really fantastic venue um, that we, we're very happy that the government of Prince Edward Island approached us to co-host this event. We have a long-standing relationship also with the University of Prince Edward Island, 
And it's a really inspiring location because this province um, on in Atlantic Canada is really trying to become a pioneer in reaching net zero emissions and showcasing um, the use of renewables and green energy to um, advance its local economy. So we're looking forward to learning a lot from our hosts in Prince Edward Island and also from the um, other uh, representatives coming from around the world as far as I, I think we have over 20, um, 20 countries represented so far and growing. So that is it from our impact report. Um, if you would like to get to know more um, about uh, what we're doing, then please do uh, get in touch. Um, we would love to hear from you. And all of this information is on the website. Check out the chat now for more information about where you can access this impact report. So thank you so much for joining us for the Island Finance Forum. It is now my absolute honor to introduce our first guest speaker who will kick off the Island Finance Forum 2024 with an opening address. So thank you so much to His Excellency Wesley Semina, the President of the Federated States of Micronesia, for joining us today to open the event. Mr. President, over to you. Good morning from beautiful Balikat. I extend warm greetings from the Federated States of Micronesia. It is an honor to address such a distinguished audience at this esteemed Island Finance Forum. This gathering of experts and stakeholders holds great significance in driving investments for small island development states. The commitment to sustainable finance and development is crucial for the economic prosperity and resilience of island communities, aligning closely with the vision of the Federated States of Micronesia for the future. This forum not only provides a platform to share expertise on sustainable and inclusive financial structures, but also offers an opportunity to address the unique challenges and opportunities faced by our own island community. The FSM, like other small island nations, is characterized by its rich natural resources, vibrant culture, and close-knit communities. However, we also face numerous complex challenges, including the impacts of climate change, limited resources, and geographic isolation, which pose significant obstacles to our sustainable development. Nevertheless, these challenges also present opportunities for innovation and collaboration. Through leveraging sustainable finance and investment, we can create a more resilient and prosperous future. The Island Finance Forum aims to bridge the gap between sustainable development practitioners and financial stakeholders fostering collaboration and partnership. As we gather here today, we recognize the importance of bringing these two groups together. By creating a space for dialogue and knowledge exchange, we can collectively work towards finding innovative financial solutions that promote sustainable development. A key objective of this forum is to facilitate access to expert knowledge and financial opportunities for island stakeholders. We understand the crucial role that access to finance and expert guidance plays in the successful implementation of sustainable projects. By providing our stakeholders with the necessary tools and resources, we can empower them to make informed decisions and take advantage of financial opportunities that align with our vision for a sustainable future. Furthermore, this forum serves as a platform to showcase the economic opportunities available from investing in the sustainability sector on islands. The FSM, with its natural resources and unique cultural heritage, has the potential for impact investing and environmental, social, and governance practices. We invite investors and stakeholders to explore the economic prospects that arise 
from investing in our sustainability sector. Together, we can create a thriving economy that not only benefits our people, but also preserves our natural environment. While discussing the broader themes of sustainable finance, it is crucial to address the specific challenges faced by our nation. The impact of climate change, rising sea levels, and extreme weather events pose significant threats to our islands. We must prioritize resilience and adaptation strategies in our financial structures to safeguard our communities and ensure their long-term well-being. Amidst the existential threat we face as a Pacific small island development state, the climate crisis has further amplified the need for more affordable financing according to my own country and our fellow seats. Infrastructure is becoming more expensive and so is debt. Yet, as seats, with our relative income, we are ineligible for affordable financing made available to the lowest income countries. Despite our vulnerability to this crisis, the pattern of financing apportioned by the international financial institutions does not take our vulnerability into account. Micronesia, like our SITS family, has advocated for a fairer and more just system like the proposed multidimensional vulnerability index, a potentially life-saving tool that would assist SITS to gain access to concessional financing that countries like mine need to survive the, the catastrophic climate crisis. In Micronesia, we have embarked on a journey towards sustainable development. We have implemented policies and initiatives that promote renewable energy, ocean conservation, and sustainable tourism. However, we recognize the need for continued collaboration and support from the international community to achieve our goals. In the energy sector, we are committed to increasing renewable energy sources to 70% of our electricity generation by 2030, with a focus on clean energy projects such as solar and wind power. Private sector investments play a key role in achieving this goal, and sustainable financing solutions are crucial in driving these green energy initiatives forward. Our ocean conservation commitments are demonstrated through our regional initiative, the Micronesian Challenge. Launched in 2006, this commitment is one of the world's most ambitious conservation efforts. It has set the FSM on a path to permanent sustainable lives and livelihoods across our 607 diverse islands. This initiative provides sustainable funding to enable communities to lead in conservation and management as well as devel develop sustainable livelihoods that ensure food security and community resilience. Additionally, we have established Blue Prosperity Micronesia, a government-led partnership with the Blue Prosperity Coalition that supports the sustainable growth of marine resources, builds our blue economy, strengthens fisheries management, and commits to protect 30% of our waters. This commitment will create the seventh largest protected area in the world and ensure the flourishing of fisheries and the preservation of ecosystems, providing a strong buffer against the impacts of climate change. I encourage all participants to actively engage in the discussions, share their experiences, and contribute their expertise to the development of sustainable and inclusive financial structures for island communities. Let us seize this opportunity to learn from each other, forge partnerships, and create a roadmap for a prosperous and sustainable future. In closing, I express my sincere gratitude to all the participants, organizers, and partners who have made this Island Finance Forum a reality. Together, let us work towards building a resilient and prosperous future for all island communities around the world. 
thank you and may this forum be a catalyst for sustainable positive change. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for that excellent address. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to join us for the Island Finance Forum and to hear some of the key issues facing the Federated States of Micronesia and many of the other countries and nations in the Pacific um, in the lead up to um, SIDS4 and COP29 this year. Now, staying in the Pacific and actually staying within the Micronesia region, it is my pleasure to welcome back, welcome once again, uh, the governor of Guam, the Honorable Lourdes Leon Guerrero, who has been a long-standing supporter of Island Innovation and our events. Um, governor, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. We really appreciate you uh, coming back once again to share what's happening in Guam, which is really becoming a leader in sustainable development um, in, in the region. So, Governor, over to you. Half a day from Guam. Many thanks for the invitation to speak before this distinguished audience at the Island Finance Forum. My name is Lulian Guerrero, and I am the governor of the island of Guam. For those of you who may be unfamiliar, Guam is located in the Western Pacific, about four hours by airplane to many Asian destinations, including Japan, Korea, and the Philippines. As the closest United States soil in Asia, we have a unique culture that blends the traditions of the indigenous Chamorro people with the influences of the many cultures who have called Guam home since our first contact with the Europeans in 1521. Our economy is heavily reliant on two industries, tourism and defense. Like many of our island friends, we suffered from the adverse impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic when we closed our economy to the outside world. But as we emerged healthy and ready to build an even more productive economy, we were set back yet again, this time by a natural disaster. Typhoon Mawar was a Category 4 typhoon when it hit our shores last May. Although these challenges were immense, I was proud of the resilience of the people of the island, and although parts of our economy are still in recovery, for the most part, our fundamentals are strong and our long-term prospects are positive. Just this year, after nearly 20 years of being non-investment grade, junk bond status, Moody's investor ratings upgraded the island's general credit rating to investment grade with a stable outlook, citing our ongoing commitment to fiscal discipline. GDB rebounded and we are back in the positive territory as of 2021. Unemployment, like the rest of the United States, is at a low of 4.1%. Private sector employment was up by 1,600 in the last quarter in areas of construction, retail, and hotels. With all this positive movement in our economy, it is an ideal time to diversify, and we are dedicated to promoting investment in industries that embody the United Nations Sustainable Developmental Goals. In 2019, I issued an executive order to create the Aquaculture Task Force to improve food security in the area of sustainable aquaculture. Our biodiversity below the ocean surface can feed our island and grow the broodstock to feed the world. We are now working towards designing an aquaculture innovation center to welcome innovators to come together with researchers on our beautiful island with the aim of zero hunger. Google recently announced the construction of undersea cables to connect Guam to Fiji and French Polynesia. In addition to cable redundancy, we believe this project will benefit all of the islands involved by improving access and reducing latency. Our neighbor, Taiwan, with a population of almost 24 million, has 15 cables. With Google's recent announcement, we will have 14 cables making their way to Guam with our population at just around 160,000. 
With this competitive advantage, a technology-driven economy is something we believe to be highly achievable and in line with the UN Sustainable Development Goals number 8 for decent work and economic growth. Whether it is through data centers that operates on renewable energy or companies in the space of gaming or app development, the cables lay the infrastructure for an ecosystem for innovation and economic growth. As concerns rise over the supply chain and the carbon footprint of the transportation industry, one solution that is getting some traction is to source manufacturing close to the customers. One way to do this is through 3D printing. In 2022, we commissioned a comprehensive analysis of the technology's application in Guam for such products as aviation parts, ship parts, and medical products such as hearing aids and implants. We especially see this area as complementary to our defense industry. We are now moving into the next stage of this plan with a sizable investment from the U.S. Department of Defense. We are building a strong, educated workforce trained by our local community college and the University of Guam. We have been supporting boot camps and apprenticeship programs to upskill our people in areas of construction, ship repair, childcare, and the healthcare sector. And we are matching our tax incentives to these values, such as our qualifying certificates, tax incentive program providing rebates and abatements for business inv investment in Guam. Any large investment to the island may apply, but by far the most generous tax incentive program is in the area of removing waste from the waste stream, our circular economy QC. We believe that we can create a win for investors, a win for our people, and a win for our environment through programs like these. Like many of my island colleagues, the most serious concern that weighs on my mind is the health care of the people of Guam. Over the last five years, I have been on an arduous journey to build regional medical campus that co-locates Guam's only public hospital with our Department of Public Health and Social Services and Behavioral Wellness Agency. It is meant to build scale around supporting our local population and regional residents so that we no longer have to fly to far off places from home to receive adequate medical care. It is absolutely in line with the UN Sustainable Development Goal number three, to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. In developing this goal, I read that the World Summit on Sustainable Development held in Johannesburg resulted in a document that cited that all human beings have the right to a healthy and productive life. It further posited the sustainable development can only be achieved in the absence of a high prevalence of debilitating diseases. As a takeaway from Guam, I challenge you to consider the role you may play in improving the health care of our island population. If the people of the islands are the stewards of the most precious of the Earth's resources, we need our stewards to be healthy. Don't you agree? In summary, investors are bullish on Guam, but unlike in the past, where more was better, we are seeking quality over quantity. Industries that promote innovation, reduce wealth inequality, build sustainable communities, and thriving families. We want to build a medical campus that serves the Pacific. We have many pieces in place, but whether you are a banker, a scientist, a business person, or an environmentalist, give some thought to how we can improve not only the physical health of the islands, but also the physical health. And call me when you have a solution. As we say here in Guam, masi, and thank you to all of you. Thank you so much, Governor, for that um, intervention. Um, it was really a 
pleasure to welcome you back and we um, look forward to seeing everything that's happening in Guam and hearing from other speakers from Guam um, at our events this year, especially as the University of Guam is one of the members of our academic council. So in conclusion, that wraps up our opening session for the Island Finance Forum. Make sure that you've looked at the agenda for which of the sessions today, tomorrow, for the rest of the week are most interesting to you. Um, the, you will get email reminders for each of the sessions. You're welcome to uh, change your settings there to uh, suit you best and add the sessions that you like in the calendar. Our sessions happen at all different times of the day, so we don't expect that you can attend every single session. And so don't worry, all of them uh, will be available on recording and all the recordings will be shared after the event. Um, so do uh, make sure that you uh, keep an eye on those. Um, and of course, uh, we uh, really are thankful to all of our speakers and all of you, our attendees, for helping to make this event happen again. Um, all the information is available on the website with the agenda and with the Zoom links, but don't hesitate to get in touch if you have any questions. And just a reminder, there is a special discount for the Global Sustainable Island Summit happening in Prince Edward Island later this year. You can, uh, you'll see that in the bottom of any of the Island Finance Forum emails that you get, and that will be valid until the end of the event. So we do hope to see many of you join us um, in Prince Edward Island uh, to take some of these virtual conversations into the in-person environment, which always adds a different dynamic, um, which is very exciting. So with that, we'll close the session. Thank you all again for being here and please do enjoy the rest of the Island Finance Forum. Bye-bye.